Dr. Laura Schlesinger. I'm a number 1-800-375-2872. I want to welcome you to this hour of the program right here on Sirius XM Stars 109. You are here with Dan and Deborah screening your calls. Carson Smith Engineering, orchestrating our music, producing the segues. And my number is 1-800-DR-LAURA, 1-800-375-2872. I have an uh, extra special guest today. We need her because a lot of you don't listen to me and let your kids have cell phones access to the internet. Now, if you do anything that foolish in the first place, giving a child that much technology when they don't have the maturity to even know how they should use toilet paper correctly, it's craziness. So, <laughs> I have Carolyn Knorr. She is the senior parenting editor of Common Sense Media. First, she's going to tell me what common sense is these days. But hi, Carolyn. It's a pleasure to hi have there. you here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you, you have actually found some common sense somewhere. Where? <laughs> uh, well, a lot of research, I guess, and a lot of talking to parents and tr sort of trying to figure out where the realistic line is um, between raising our kids in the digital age and sort of being able to access all this great stuff that we have, but then also being a great digital role model and parenting. So what does a senior parenting editor actually do? Well, I write a lot of advice for parents um, really about how to manage technology, how to, how to uh, incorporate your own family's values into raising your kids in a world where, you know, we have 24-hour um, access and bombardment of media and technology. A common sense media, we think it's really important for parents to act as the intermediaries between media and technology and their kids. I know, but between broken families, no families, uh, two career families and the rest of it, we don't have the parents around to do this. So then what? Uh, well, I, I mean, I think that, um, I think that there's always going to be a guardian of a child um, and you know nanny the daycare the babysitter that's right um, and I think I'm throwing you a curve and I apologize because that's not really your responsibility but I'm pointing I mean, out a that. lot of us can really role model good digital citizenship it absolutely does start with parents and role models and by the way our you know pop culture figures actors artists politicians everyone really should be modeling this because we are living our lives out loud in public. Oh yeah, they're they're doing a really good job of it, aren't they? <laughs> Some people are. Starting um, with Hillary Clinton. And, okay, and let's I, move and along. I just think it's, right, and so we don't have great digital role models out there, no. and so it, uh, no. it's absolutely important for parents, teachers, educators, anyone who's in the lives of uh, young kids, really does need to be modeling great digital citizenship. Okay, the most important part of this that I was hoping, and I'm grateful that you will speak to is sexting. Right. Um, parents either aren't aware of it, get flummoxed by it, have no idea what to do about it. Me, I think it's irresponsible for parents to give kids cell phones that do anything but take calls. So, because kids don't have the responsibility, the intelligence, the maturity to deal with things that are so overwhelming as being on the net and being intrigued and being bullied and being seduced. And so they're just not savvy to any of this so if you were going to put together which I know you have if you were going to put together a program of teaching parents what to do before during and after the fact of sexting give it to them right now well I think it's really important for parents to talk to their kids before anything happens you know it's actually really hard as a parent to address sexuality with your kids um, but we are learning that kids are actually getting exposure to pornography as young as 10 and 11 years old. So we do need to talk to kids about, um, you know, you just never, ever take a picture of your private parts and, you know, just stop there. Like, don't even do that. Um, I actually do think that parents, if you're going to give your kid a cell phone, then you, you should use the cell phone's built-in tools 
to remove or hide a lot of the um, you know the the communication features and those high tech features that do allow kids to uh, you know to take a picture and put it on the internet. So you can remove that feature from a phone before you give it to your kid. And you can password protect that so kids can't even do it. And I actually think that it 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 does stem. I'm, I don't want to say ignorance on the part of parents, just because I don't mean to say it in a negative way, but a lot of parents just don't even know that that, you know, possibility exists, that you don't have to hand your kid a phone that has all these powerful features. You can remove them and have your kid earn them as they demonstrate, you know, good, responsible, respectful behavior. So, I mean, number one, it starts with don't take a picture of yourself. Um, But the other thing is we really need to help our kids think through the consequences of their actions. I, I read a quote once that was said something like teen sexting is a very rational act with very irrational consequences. And I just don't agree with that because I think that when teens are and, and tweens are in the throes of those hormonal, you know, the hormonal, you know, chaos that they're living through, it makes it even harder for them to think through the consequences of their actions and to really understand that the person on the other side of the screen may not have your best interest at heart. I don't think anybody asking you for a naked picture has your best interest in heart. That's right. And, you know, young kids who are in love and think they're never going to break up and think that this is true love. And also, to tell you the truth, a lot of the sexting is used as a sort of relationship currency. So kids feel that they're going to be, you know, uh, developing a, str- uh, a stronger rapport with their supposed soulmate if they do share these photos and a lot of times there's pressure from one partner on the other partner to share these things if you really loved me you would send me a nudie that type of thing and then what we need to talk to our kids about is self-respect and really to keep private things private we're living in a world where everything can go public and um, and you know the consequences of even just taking that picture because that can you know wind up on someone else's phone and then it can just absolutely go viral it can actually go viral on the internet and be used for um you know for purposes that you never ever intended i mean there are creeps out on the internet who are looking for pictures of young girls to use on their own websites for their own you know diabolical purposes so you just never want to start with that and really talk to, talk to kids about keeping private things private And also, respecting yourself enough to never, ever, you know, if somebody asks you for something like that, you block that person and you don't speak to them. So what what do you, how do you help parents when this has already happened? Well, I think that it's really, it is important for parents, for everyone to just sort of calm down. Um, I think that, you know, my son, who's 18, has, I know that he received a sex from someone and um you know we're living in an environment where like you know, people are really open with this type of thing you know very very open with their sexuality in public online all the time and we have to teach our kids that uh, you know i think it comes back to family values you can say like our family just doesn't do that we don't believe in that you know like every family has their own rules this mm-hmm. is one of our rules that's not our family um and I think that you do want to set consequences. I think you have those conversations early with your kids about using their phones responsibly and respectfully, and that includes, uh, you know, good digital citizenship habits, um, and also just never misusing the phone or using it in a way that violates the trust between a parent and a child. So you have to set consequences for misuse. Um, and there is technology you know, where you can see on your computer everything your kid does on their cell phone, everything. You can do that, um, although those programs aren't always foolproof. It really, I think, it does come back to having those conversations. But you have to be, you know, I think the hardest part of parenting is when your kids do do something that's wrong, and and this is potentially illegal. It can actually have, you know, very legal consequences for kids to have photos of underage uh, nudity on their phones. That's considered child porn in a lot of states. So they can actually be prosecuted for that. So, uh, you know, I am not a big believer in using threats um, to parent your kids, but I think that, uh, you know, that's one of the consequences you can talk to kids about. I think you have to take the phone away. But then the other thing that is so important is you've got to look at what is going on with your kid and from a 360-degree view. 
a sexting event is not something that happens just out of the blue at, from, from, a, from like a regular normal kid, like something else is going on. So you've got to talk to your kid, what is going on in your life right now that would make you, you know, act out like this? Is this person pressuring you? Do you not feel good about yourself? And do you feel that the only way that you can get acceptance or likes on, you know, Instagram or whatever is to share these photos? So you've got to find out what's going on with your kid. And then the other really difficult part about this is coaching your kid through this period. That's what we have to do with parents. I mean, I'm not a big believer in shaming your kid, um, you know, because I think that this partly comes out of an interest and a curiosity about sex, which is developmentally appropriate. Um, but we're giving kids the tools to express that in an inappropriate way. So we have to take some responsibility in helping our kids learn the right way to use these really, really powerful technical tools. Would you be so kind as to inform my audience right now of the website where they can learn more and get more feedback and more information? Yes, it's commonsense.org. That's all one word. And on our website, we also do, a lot of people know us for our movie reviews. We review everything, uh, every piece of media that comes out for kids, we review and we provide a developmentally appropriate, um, uh, completely, you know, um, objective age rating for everything. We often disagree with a lot of the um, industry ratings. So we'll provide an age rating and a quality review for every piece of media. And we also offer parents a lot of advice, really common sense, rational advice. It's all based on how to, how to use your own family values to raise your kids in a world that really seems to be encroaching upon, you know, our kids' hearts and minds all the time. I so appreciate what you do, and thank you so much for coming on. And oh, I know everybody you. is going to be rushing <laughs> to your website <laughs> because this is uh, this is uh, sadly an ongoing issue. So thank right. you so much. You're very kind thank to come you. with us. Thank you. All right. Take thank care, you. Carolyn. Okay. Bye bye. Carolyn Knorr, senior parenting editor of Common Sense Media. My number one eight hundred three seven five twenty eight seventy two. 